Hey, would it be? It's your boy Dre OG. Welcome back to the OG family. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you're rocking with the vibes and the content. But look, we got these dirty facts about history that they probably didn't teach your ass at school. I should say black ass at school, but we ain't gonna say all that. We just gonna get into the video. Hopefully y'all having a good day. Just know we're going through this thing called life together. So just know, man, things always turn around for you, man. Hey, shout out to my new subscribers. 50% of the people that watch my videos aren't even subscribed. Stop being weird and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Put them notifications on. Let's get it. Good vibes only, baby. Too many cherries at a party. In 1850, President Taylor went to a 4th of July party where he ate a ton of cherries and drank a lot of fresh milk. And then he died. The cause of death was apparently gastroenteritis from the acid of the cherries mixed with the milk. We could speculate that this was cholera, and this was before milk was pasteurized, but his doctors felt very strongly that- This has got to be one of the most disturbing human experiment in history. And the worst part is, it was done to children. Wendell Johnson and Mary Tudor conducted a stuttering experiment on 22 oh, orphans. Man. You see, what happened was that the children were separated into two groups. The first group received positive speech therapy, while the second group received negative speech therapy. What did that mean? That means they were belittled for the way they spoke and were led to believe they had a speech impediment. These normal speaking children in the second group all developed speech problems, which they ended up retaining for the rest of their lives. This experiment is often referred to as the monster study. For more Seven Sins Crime, you can hit that plus button. In the 1900s- You wanna know what's crazy about that shit though? Is that that's not really the worst shit. Like, and we sitting here like so desensitized to this shit. We didn't seen a lot of stuff in present today. So uh, kind of, that's kind of crazy to think about. A lot of people walking around here with stutters that people did to them. Basically, you gave them a stutter. Black women were dehumanized not only as economic and reproductive property, but also as a disposable sexual commodity. They were forced to provide white men with a sexual outlet that in turn allowed them to protect the purity of their white wives. Doing so both hypersexualized and defeminized them because it made the white woman virtuous and pure and the enslaved woman lustful and vicious. Enslaved societies also had a deep division of labor between enslaved and white women. Enslaved women were expected to show strength and stamina in the fields, while white women ideally Chile did little or no outdoors work. In the antebellum South, that's because they couldn't be out there in the sunlight like that, you know? For example, black women who were shit. thought to be subhuman by their white masters were not protected from violence. They were seen as beasts in the fields who did not need their bodies and virtue protected, while white women were seen as true women based on their roles in the home and their traits of innocence and weakness. But enslaved black women never got the chance to display the traits attributed to white women because they were always in the public sphere of work and never allowed in the private sphere of a home. Also, when punished, they were often forced to be naked, which contributed to their dehumanization and stripped away any of their femininity. On the flip side, white women were dressed head to toe, which ensured their nobility and womanhood. And so, black women were not treated like true women, aka white women. Instead, they were treated like black men. Consequently, the stereotypes that started to emerge surrounding black women, that they were sexually promiscuous and aggressive, were used to justify the atrocities committed against them. But how does all of that tie into today well that'll be in part three disturb you want to know why they promiscuous that's because they loved them some black men you feel me self-explanatory man we love our women we love y'all real shit you know what i'm saying white man y'all should love y'all women white man i mean chinese man y'all should love y'all women everybody but look that should be regular it shouldn't be a thing where somebody's been looked at of being super promiscuous because they like to, they like to clap them cheeks they love us. You see why though, you know what I'm saying? We out here, you know what I'm saying? Hey, every group of people should adore their women. We should protect them. For sure. Ain't true like, story. There ain't no hoes, none of that. You know, I don't, I don't subscribe to none of that at all. Elizabeth Bathory, history's most murderous woman, found guilty for 80 murders, but could have killed as many as 650. She supposedly bathed in virgin's blood to keep herself young. Some other way she would torture her victims. Why is she just killing that many people like that? Press the plus for more of the macabre. This is one of the darkest things I've ever read in history, Thank and it's about Columbus meeting the natives. 
In his letters, he writes, They are very simple and honest and exceedingly liberal with all they have, none of them refusing anything he may possess when he is asked for it. They exhibit great love towards all others in preference to themselves. He says, They are the best people in the world and above all the gentlest, without knowledge of what is evil, nor do they murder or steal. They love their neighbors as themselves and they have the sweetest talk in the world, always laughing. After saying all that, he then writes, they would make fine servants. With 50 men, we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. Is that not the most brutal thing you've ever heard? Like, I just don't understand how we got to that point as humans. How did we let such evil people be in charge of this world? And I've been thinking about this for quite some time, how evil usually wins and rules throughout history and throughout today. And I think it comes down to the simple fact that evil can indefinitely get rid of good because evil can kill and good people won't kill. That's the issue. We have, there's no indefinite way to get rid of bad people if you're a good person because we won't kill, we won't stoop that low, but evil people will, and that keeps power and control over the good people. The only way good can win is if it's so powerful that it mentally and emotionally moves evil to stop being evil. You know what's the scariest part about history though? Everything horrible that was done was done by someone that thought they were doing the right thing that really thought they were right and they were good. They were doing the right thing in their mind. We really got to be careful of our virtues because sometimes they're actually not virtuous at all. I mean, we talk about good things and bad things, you know, like good and bad people. Like the the worst part I, I found out about that video that I see about that video right there is his mustache. But everything else he was hitting on, I, I, I agree with him. I agree with him because I've showed y'all videos on this channel where they were, you know, when the white people came to America, they were on little boats going down the streams and they had the Indian kid taking them and they was describing the Indian kid, you know, like, oh, he's built for this shit too, you know, that we ain't really capable of doing the work that they can do. And then they brought them down there to the indigenous and uh, Aboriginal black people that were there that were already living there. And they, and they was describing them. They and, and one thing that stood out to me the most was he was like, these people don't know jealousy. They don't know violence. They share everything and they're willing to trade goods. They're very peaceful people. It was like, look at their body statures. They're made for all of this environment and this and that, you know, like it was, it was crazy. And this guy just said the same shit, you know, we, we all seeing what's going on out here. And one thing I got to tell y'all is we ain't the same people that they enslaved long time ago they know what we capable of we know what we capable of we're not just gonna sit here and let somebody do that what they're afraid of is is that we're gonna turn that against them they're gonna be slaves but we, we ain't we ain't that low we don't stoop that low my people we we, we ride high you know no pun intended hello my friend how on earth does a painting from the 16th century display dinosaurs well, my friend, the answer is actually very interesting. Yeah. We are fortunate enough to live in an era where we have immediate access to images of literally any creature mankind knows of. But that wasn't really the case historically, was it? So there were cases of people trying to paint creatures that they had not actually seen, simply basing them off descriptions that they have read. So this could have been a depiction of an elephant or perhaps a camel in a time where such creatures could only be found in books. Similarly, here's another attempt at drawing a camel. Now, this attempt at drawing a camel ended up looking like a Pokemon. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? <laughs> You might recognize this painting by Pablo Picasso, but you probably didn't know the shocking story behind it. The woman in this painting is Dora Mar, and she was Picasso's lover and muse. But their relationship was far from normal. Picasso made Dora fight the mother of his daughter to win his love. And he stayed in the room painting while watching them fight. Once he even beat Dora until she fell unconscious. Even though this painting, The Weeping Woman, sold for millions, Dora actually hated all the portraits that Picasso painted of her. She's even said all Picasso's portraits
shits with me are lies. After years of emotional and physical abuse, Dora eventually had a mental breakdown, which led her to undergo electroshock therapy at the hands of a controversial psychiatrist. But throughout all of this, Dora was a talented artist herself and has created many paintings and photos. So hopefully we can remember her as more than just Picasso's muse. Follow for more. This picture. Well, that would that ain't go the way I thought it was gonna go, y'all. But shit, we gonna keep going though. Like, was taken in 1890 when this scalped man told his story to a local newspaper. Fuck. This is the story of Robert McGee. In 1864, 13 year old Robert was headed west on the Santa Fe Trail with his parents. They died along the way, and the hold on, he didn't look 13. Boy, orphaned, continued the journey with a wagon train bringing supplies to New Mexico. Somewhere in the western reaches of Kansas, the soldiers tasked with guarding the wagon train got delayed, and the civilians were set upon by a band of Brule Sioux Indians, led by their chief, Little Turtle. The drivers and teamsters of the wagon train were no match for the Indian warriors, and they were all tortured and killed. Young McGee watched helplessly as their blood was shed, and then he was taken before Little Turtle. The chief decided that he would kill the boy himself, and he put a bullet in McGee's back. The boy fell to the ground, still alive and conscious, and Little Turtle put two arrows through him, pinning him down. And then the chief took out his blade and removed 64 square inches from McGee's head, starting just behind the ears. As he lay on the ground more Indians came upon him, and poked him full of more holes with knives and spears. All the while the boy was awake. When the soldiers finally caught up with the wagon train they found a horrible massacre, with everyone scalped. But as the soldiers picked through the bodies they found that McGee and another boy had survived. They were rushed to Fort Larned, where the other boy died. Somehow the scalpless McGee survived his experience, and many years beyond. You want to know what though? I, you, if shit like that, you can't feel you can't feel sorry for that because you already know what they were doing here. As, as colonizers, man, getting fucked up over here, messing with some shit they ain't had no business doing. You know? Yeah, that's the it for that video right there, yo. Uh, our history is just so interesting, man. And what we're coming to the realization of is that everything ain't what it seems. And I was watching this uh, TV series, and you know, I ain't gonna get into what, it, but deep into it, but. One of the characters in the movie in a, in a TV series was saying that don't believe everything you think. And it was very powerful. He said it through the series and at the end you understood why he said don't believe everything you think. And he had to include himself into there because he was talking to the young lady that was developing powers and stuff like that. And be very strong and powerful. And she thought negatively about him. But the whole time he was there for helping her and looking over her, watching out for her, you know. But she was thinking that he was this evil guy because everybody else was like, oh, yeah, this guy's a crooked person. And she always looked at him wrong. And it was another person that looked just like her the whole time. But at the, but at the end, she understood that they were the same. They had abilities and everything. But don't always believe everything you think. Go do research for yourself. And that's why I put this information out here on this channel. We sit here. I don't want y'all to just be like, oh, that's so true. I agree with Dre on everything. No. Go look this stuff up. So you can really verify and you can see if it's accurate for your liking or not. You know? So we're all, you know, at the end of the day, we're all just individuals experiencing reality through our own perceptive eyes. And, you know, you deem what's true for you. But our history is history, right? This is not my history. This is somebody else's history telling me that, oh, my people were just slaves. And that's how I look at it. You know, we would just, that's the only thing they teach you, but they don't teach you about pyramids. They don't teach you about what our ancestors, what, what their religion was. And all of this stuff is hitting the internet. You see what's happening with Kyrie, Kanye West. Like we understand who we are. I can't, y'all can't, can't, you can no longer just tell us anything and expect for us to just to listen. We outnumber your, we outnumber everybody on this planet. We have a lot of power. But all we want, all our people want is just to, just for motherfuckers to leave us alone. That's it. Just for motherfuckers to leave us alone. And that's why I implore everybody to do their research so you can understand our people aren't violent. Aren't, we aren't just rude. We're just tired of being fucked with at the end of the day. Look, man, hopefully y'all got something from this video right here. Hopefully y'all learned something. I appreciate y'all for stopping through. If y'all don't like these type of videos, y'all can go to my other videos. I got a plethora of other stuff that y'all might want to watch. I'll see y'all in the next episode. And like I always say, man, spread love because there's too much hate in this world. I love you guys. No matter what creed, color, background you from, everybody stay in their lane. Mind your damn business. Do your research. 
just try to be better people. You know, that's all we can do. That's all I can do. But I see you on the next video, and I'm out. Bye.